Hello everybody, my name is Laura Henderson. I'm the Head of Programme for Public Outreach at Frontiers, and I'm speaking to you today from our office in Lausanne. Um, and although this uh, discussion is pre-recorded, I will be um, online throughout the conference this week to answer your questions um, after you've watched this presentation. I'm here to talk to you today um, about the very unique pedagogical approach that comes from uh, Frontiers and specifically from the journal that I lead, which is called Frontiers for Young Minds. So let's get started. Bear with me a second while I share my screen. Okay, so when I say open pedagogy, what does that mean? Um, in short, it means that the children or young people who work with our journal are the reviewers of real scientists. They are directly connected to the people doing the research and are actually giving them direct feedback on that research to make sure that it is communicable for people of their own age. Okay. But before I get into all that, I'll give you lots more details soon, but I first like to talk about Frontiers as a company. Um, for those of you who don't know us, um, just a quick introduction to what we do. Okay, so um, first of all, uh, we are a global open access publisher. As I said, we're fully online and we are on a mission to make science open. Um, a very grandiose statement perhaps, but what do we mean by that? We believe that open science can help everybody, enable everybody to live healthy lives on a healthy planet. And therefore we feel in order for us to make significant change in the world as one publisher, we need to become the largest and most cited publisher in the world to show that we have made significant change both in the academic publishing landscape, but also in the open resources around, available to the world uh, regarding the science that's happening everywhere. Okay, so our commitment to this is learner-driven education via open access. And at the moment, we have over a hundred um, core science journals that are available um, on our website to anybody with an internet browser. So we are genuinely open access, gold open access, which means that it's, everything is available from the point of publication to anyone who is browsing. You can see here on the left, we publish a lot of our, um, within our core journals, we publish a lot of our content within um, article collections, thematically arranged collections, which we call research topics. Um, and these are extremely popular and easy to browse um, around sort of core questions happening in the research fields. This leads to our journals being some of the most highly viewed and highly cited in the world. Um, you can see here some metrics from uh, one of our field leading journals, Frontiers in Plant Science, the largest and most cited in its field um, and one of many that is so. For Frontiers globally, um, for us aggregated as a whole company, we have 1.4 billion article views and downloads worldwide. Um, and this is on all continents. Um, and we have 2.2 million article citations which overall combines to make us not only the 12th largest publisher by volume of articles per year, but also the third most cited in the world, and that is an average per article within the last impact factor window. And that is a really phenomenal achievement for a publisher who is only 12 years old in terms of our oldest journal online, and, and many more have joined since then. Um, so that really is quite phenomenal. Um, uh, and I believe that is a, uh, demonstrates the response from the research community to the very different way that Frontiers does things um, from our peer review process to um, our open access, to our promotion of content, to our engagement with those research communities as well. So I've talked about research engagement. I've talked about us being a bit different. How can I, how can I substantiate that? Let me show you some ideas that we have here. So first of all, um, we have many resources that go beyond just the academic journals. We pride ourselves, as I said, on that learner-driven content, content that you want to consume in the way you want to consume it. On the right-hand side, you can see an example of one of the information hubs we've created, this one around coronavirus. Um, we have here not only core articles from our journals, but uh, information from our funding monitor, which we created. Um, we have expert commentary in, um, article, uh, in interview format, and we have webinars that we've actually conducted within our journals on this as well. All of these fantastic resources helping the public to really understand what is happening with the COVID virus around the world. 
We have similar hubs, for example, one on diversity, ethics and inclusion, DEI, um, and uh, one on policy labs, which reaches out to um, those uh, actually making the policy um, on, at the national and international levels um, and has lots of fascinating connections uh, and interviews and other formats there as well. On the left, you can see another of our very popular formats um, of content consumption, um, and this is um, our YouTube channel. Here in particular, we have a unique system um, of speakers and series of events called the Frontiers Forum. Um, these are where we have the top scientists in their field coming to speak to us um, in a sort of TEDx style talk about their research. Um, and the most recent one coming up soon um, is uh, Al Gore, the ex US Vice President and Nobel Prize winner, coming to tell us um, why he is optimistic about climate change. So look out for that um, on our YouTube channel. I thoroughly recommend it will be a great event. But within this very unique umbrella then of a company that sets itself apart within the publishing landscape, who are Frontiers for Young Minds? Because we are a bit different even by the very um, innovative and perhaps positively disruptive uh, standards of Frontiers in the publishing landscape. We are an open collective of editors in 55 countries, science mentors who help the young reviewers do their job, and thousands of those young reviewers under their guidance, who then help the international authors to rewrite their science in a way that is uh, understandable and engaging for People, young people of an age roughly from eight to 15 is our guideline. However, we have great success um, throughout the high school and middle school ages. We have six thematically grouped sections within the journal to make it easy for kids and users to navigate the content. And here you can see how those are arranged. Um, and within these, uh, we also have another a way to help navigate content. This is um, uh, our unique process, uh, our peer review, um, but I, I will also show you how else we can navigate content in a moment. Our unique process is what really sets us apart in terms of pedagogy for the children. Because they are so actively involved, you will see how this is completely uh, different to anything that other publishers offer. Other publishers do have, for example, um, kids publishing their own research, or scientists simply writing in a way they think is accessible for children. However, we bring those two together. So first of all, our editorial board, uh, um, which is uh, established uh, researchers who act as the handling editors, may identify any discoveries um, which are, for example, within our own Frontiers journals or indeed within other journals uh, anywhere in the world. Um, and if the authors are willing to rewrite their work for children, then we are willing to include it. It does not have to be a Frontiers article that is rewritten. Then, once we've reached out to the authors and they've agreed to write with us, they rewrite the article for that audience target age group, as I said, from about eight years to 15 years, more or less. Then, um, this is then assigned to a science mentor. Science mentors are really crucial in this process. Typically, they are educators, for example, they might work in schools, um, or they might be supervisors uh, within a laboratory, something like that, um, who have connections with uh, young kids, teens, um, who would like to be involved in this process. Um, so they are accredited educators, um, and the science mentors then assist their young reviewers to write a review report. That review report can be as critical as they like. Um, many authors who work with us tell us that the, the young kids are the toughest reviewers they've ever worked with. Forget the mythical reviewer three, they say. This one is the really tough one. Um, because they then must respond and address all concerns raised by the young reviewers. They are not allowed to publish the article with us until everything has been addressed to the satisfaction of the young reviewers who initially reviewed the paper. That way we can ensure we have total understanding and the paper is uh, genuinely communicating with the intended audience. Finally, the article is typeset and published freely available, as indeed are all Frontiers journals and all articles we publish on our website. Anyone with an internet browser then can access that and can use it as, a, as they wish, which then of course frees up educators in schools, um, in workshops, um, in, uh, you know, education camps, whatever it may be, summer camps, to use the learning activities based on our freely available articles. 
And we are going to go even more global with this initiative. Of course, we have published primarily in English um, and we have done since the inception. However, we are now proud to be expanding into new languages. Um, our first language expansion was into Hebrew, thanks to the um, superb leadership and connections of our chief editor, Professor Idan Sejev, based in Israel. We were able to initiate a whole new Hebrew website and begin translating content from the existing English content into Hebrew. Now we are able to, with a simple switch of a toggle, change the language of the website and content from English to Hebrew and now Arabic, thanks to our partner Kaust in Saudi Arabia. And um, so you can really see that that is a phenomenal uh, achievement already for such a young project. And in 2022, we want to take this further forward. With further funding that we are looking for at the moment, we are, plan we are already working to bring this concept um, into children who primarily will speak Chinese, that's the first expansion project next year, and then Spanish thereafter, with more languages to come um, as funding and opportunities and partners become available for those projects. So more on that later. Then I told you there were other ways where we navigate content within our, our journal itself. And these are the themed article collections, which you already saw exist in our core journals, but also exist within Frontiers for Young Minds. So where we are thinking about teams of scientists around to publishing around a single research question, it gives the children who are reading it deeper coverage and better context from many different experts who may be working on a similar question within a similar laboratory uh, or collaborating globally. The collection, when completed, is published as an ebook uh, with its own ISBN, so it becomes a sort of freely available link uh, as a whole collection that can be downloaded completely free, again, with, by anyone with an internet browser. To date, we have 24 of these collections uh, live in the journal. Some are still receiving submissions, um, and we are intending to keep this up as a core way of bringing in really high profile content um, in the years to come. Here you can see some examples, some of our high profile examples, and they are very highly viewed. Um, the Ocean, um, a fabulous uh, multidisciplinary collection uh, with uh, UNESCO con connections, um, where we are looking, we are in talks about potential translation. Um, and here below, um, a medical collection on microbial bugs and superbugs, led by the field uh, chief editor of our medical journal, um, Michel Goldman, um, with extremely high views uh, for that collection, for which we are looking into a translated ebook. We're also proud to say that we have some really big names engaging globally with Frontiers for Young Minds. For example, we have two collections that we're looking at um, coming up for the following year. A second edition of a collection that we published with the IPCC um, based on their most recent climate report, which of course we will have all seen in the news. And then we're also looking into a potential collaboration with NASA to ask some of the big questions about space exploration and technology. I'm also very proud to show you a brand new collection which has just gone online on Tuesday the 7th of September um, of a group of Nobel Prize winners, no less. Um, five initially with lots more to come. And it's already engaging over a hundred young reviewers on this. Um, and this collection is a real flagship project these uh, Nobel Prize winners are telling us how they got into science, what inspired them, and what their career path was, and then also what recommendations they would make for any one of the young people reading this article to get into science themselves. And we have really achieved some stellar results with this. We have, um, in just 72 hours after launching the collection, we took a snapshot of our results. We had 2.2 million impacts on social media already and 10,000 collection views in just 72 hours, which is really fantastic. And the Nobel Prize winners themselves have been incredibly gracious and supportive of this project. As you can see, the pedagogical aspect of this was really what appealed to them. May Britt Moser told us, I hope the papers in this journal may help nurture and reinforce children's passion and curiosity for science. What a gift to humanity that would be. And Roger Kornberg confirmed that he felt inspiration and education of young people about science has never been more important. Likewise, um, Michael Levitt posted on his Twitter account very recently that he is happier with this article for Frontiers for Young Minds than almost anything else he has ever done. And I think that is possibly the greatest accolade a publisher could have. What a wonderful ringing endorsement from such incredible people, such wonderful global minds. 
and we know that therefore this collection will be the start of a really um, high profile initiative for Frontiers um, and we will keep going um, in the years to come as well with other high profile collections along these lines. Why then is this open pedagogical uh, approach so successful and so appealing to these even the highest profile scientists in the world? It's because the students act as moderators of information. This is a precursor, of course, to them then becoming creators of research, not just consumers. They are not um, in, um, in consuming the content only um, in a passive sense. They are helping to show that the content can become more accessible. They are making themselves um, part of that process. And that means that they are also learning not only the science of the article itself, which of course is super valuable. So if you're a teacher in a classroom, you're teaching them the science of the article, that is the primary goal. But the reviewers are learning additionally how to think critically, which makes them ready to become the scientists of tomorrow by asking the right questions. And that really is a passion for us as well. And this unique pedagogy um, is extremely popular in, a, in the live review format one of as well. Here we see an example I'm just playing you from a live review event that we had um, in an, one of the Australian schools. And this has been replicated all over the world um, where the, here we are, you see the associate editor explained the concept of Frontiers to Young Minds to the school. The director of the Institute connected the author of a neuroscience paper to the students in the school with a science mentor. And they then were able to study the process, understand the paper, feedback to the author, and ultimately recommend for publication. If you have sort of five minutes to watch this That's article, um, I thoroughly recommend it. Um, it is only five minutes long um, and it's freely available on our YouTube channel. The link is there, Frontiers in live slash peer slash review. Um, and I won't play the whole thing for you now, but I can recommend it. It's good to see, don't take our word for it, take their word for it. Um, the children also give us their review in this video about how they felt about the event, how they felt about engaging with the content in this way. And it really is very revealing. So finally, I would like to leave you with a thought on how you can get involved with Frontiers for Young Minds. If you've been interested by what you've heard, here are some ideas. Um, you can write a young minds version of if you have your own articles published in research, maybe you would like to write it up in a way that children can access. Please talk to us about it and we can give you some guidelines. Or if you're a researcher um, who has strong connections in your field, perhaps you might want to consider um, hosting a young minds collection yourself where you would bring together other researchers who might be keen to rewrite their work in this way. If you're an educator based in a school or otherwise, you might consider wanting to become a science mentor to be able to engage your uh, young students with this possible way of being involved with research content, actually performing the review themselves. Or finally, if you're coming from the partnerships funding space or from the policy space, you might want to partner with us in order to help us support us in disseminating this content globally, because this truly is um, a benefit for all, for all who can read it. For any of these aspects, please feel free to get in touch with us. Myself and the team would be delighted to discuss this with you directly. The whole team are available at kids at frontiersin.org or myself directly, laura.henderson at frontiersin.org. And we will be eagerly awaiting for your outreach and very happy to, conduct, uh, to talk to you directly during the conference week um, if you get in touch with us this week. Okay, and therefore just one final thought. If you have questions for us, you can send us your questions directly through the sponsorship space on the Open Education Global website. There'll be a space there, you can find us there as a sponsor and you'll be able to see there's a, there's a chat board where you can add some questions for us. I will be online through the week and I'll be glad to respond to you as quickly as possible. So please come and find us. We are looking forward to talking to you and thank you very much for your attention. Have a great rest of the conference. I wish you very well. <laughs>